black. Oh, great. <laughs> That's always a good sign, right? No well, um, anyways, kind of have to start over. But thank you for joining again. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, like I said, I got late. I uh, started late in the game. Um, and kind of, because I'm starting the whole recording all over again, kind of a recap. I just said, you know, thanks for joining. Um, yeah. And we're all excited for being 2020 and the new movie coming out. Um, and I'm doing this brand new series that one Bond guy meets where, again, I meet different people throughout the community. But and ask kind of different questions, kind of like an interview type of thing. Just to, so for me to get to know you a little bit better, for you to get to know me a little bit better, just everyone who hasn't seen or know your account, which is probably quite a few we not a few because you're pretty you've gone to some pretty amazing places and done a lot of bond locations with beautiful pictures i'm so jealous i appreciate but, that yeah. Yeah. thanks for yeah. having me man looking forward to uh, talking and uh get to know you a little bit more and uh see what we all have in common it's one of yeah. the best things about it um okay let me get to my notes here real quick yeah. and to you, you had uh you mentioned you before we had tech technical problems you said you were heading to new york soon yeah, yeah. I was heading to New York. I'm heading to New York soon, um, and I wanted to go check out Ed and Peel. And, you know, I was talking to Joe Darlington in my last um, video, and I asked him, hey, do you, do you think they would allow, you know, video and pictures? Because I don't want to go up in there and just, like, start taking pictures and videos and then get upset, you know. And I asked because I know you guys were there for the event, right? right? Yeah, I would, I would certainly go and ask, you know, whoever's there at the time, just uh... – Make sure they're cool with it, not unless for anything, you know, certain reasons, or I can't imagine why they wouldn't let you. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we take photos and videos in all the time, but of course, we were there for uh, specific things, so I know it was allowed. So yeah, just just be on the just err on the side of caution and just ask, always ask. Yeah, and one kind of off-topic thing, but I I seen your bottle of Kingsman. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. Did you? For me, the whole thing kind of started from the Kingsman franchise for me. Yeah. And my kind of story on how I got into Bond is, I, you know, I saw the first Kingsman movie in the theaters and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And I started collecting the clothes. I have the, I actually have the, uh, my prescription in the glasses from the oh, movie. Oh, very cool, very cool. Um, I use those every day for school and everything. And uh, um, it started with that and then, you know, my, my parents were like, have you ever seen a Bond movie? Because this is like, Kingsman is kind of what bond was you know it's just a modern version i was like isn't that just like your stereotypical british spy guy i'm like i'll give it a whirl so i remember one night watching dr no and it just snapped everything just i started from the beginning because i'm more i like to start from the beginning and then right. work forward um and everything just it was like a huge waterfall everything just started pouring out and then it was great because at the same time it was um during a time in my life where I didn't know what to do, like um, I was listening to the podcast you had with Joe Darlington, actually a couple was it a few no, probably a couple of months ago, probably I can't yeah. remember when it was. It was sometime um, fall, something like that. Yeah, and I remember you know you say, and I kind of found a lot of similarities when you were talking about the college times, um, because I'm kind of going through that phase right now where I'm just started in college. I'm going to school to become a commercial airline pilot. That's my goal. Very cool. Um, I want to be able to travel the world, and you know, aviation's kind of been in my family for generations. And um, but yeah, right now I'm <clears throat> just started a whole new life with college and high school. Was I, I, like, I would like to think of it as something, some event that happened, you know, right. that's past. You know, I still have a few friends from there, but not as many as I'd like. But yeah, it's cool. pointless, man. I mean, you know, yeah. the, the, the people that I'm sure that you hung out with and that you, I know, all the girls you like, whatever, in high school. I mean, high school is just a, it's not a waste of time, but as far as your social life and yeah. the people that you meet and the friends that you're going to have for the rest of your life, you're going to find those in college more than likely. Mm -hmm. um, like even to this day, the guys that I live with my freshman year of college, we're still friends to this day. Uh, I don't see them a lot, but we're still as I call best friends are going to be, you know, one of them will be a best man in my wedding and all these things. So, I mean, you're, you're going to find your core group of people um, in college. Cause again, you got to remember everybody in high school, immature, growing up, a lot of changes going on inside them and in their life. And, you know, no one knows how to act. It's just the chaos. I can't imagine doing it over again, especially today with all the technology. I, I can't imagine. No, thank you. 
It's just exactly. And the fact that I had, I went to a very small school. My senior class was only about 200 to 300 kids. And total, it was about 800 kids in the school yeah. total. But um, yeah, besides that, you know, I'm like I said, I'm, I really connected with you when you were talking to Joe about that. And I thought, you know what? I want to talk to this guy next because I know I appreciate that. that. Thank you. Our age difference isn't as big as some of the other Bond influencers. Right. Just, you right. know, I'm going to be 20 this cool. 20 this year. And um, so, I mean, I'm excited, you know, to get down and chat it up with you. Yeah, um, anytime. Happy to do it. It's fun. So, I guess kind of like an introduction question, like everybody gets asked this, but like, how did you find out about Bond? How did you get into it? Like, what was one thing for you? I just yeah uh you know kind of stereotypical holiday time marathons on tv you know years ago uh i was um on a trip obviously for christmas and i remember my dad uh watching a movie on tv and it happened to be goldfinger um mm -hmm. didn't know it was goldfinger at the time just kind of watched bits and pieces of it and then i would say probably another year later back to christmas time the following year same marathon different right. movie never really understood what it was uh, and then finally got old enough uh i was probably 10 11 and um kind of caught the bug um and probably didn't watch goldfinger in its full uh entirety until you know years down the road um but that's kind of what kind of sparked it for me yeah and i think you said something about watching it i think because i just remember from the podcast from the spike channel right yeah 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 i remember watching all the star wars marathons on that channel and like I remember watching, I'm, oh my God, there's some nights that I was watching something and something like inappropriate just caught on, and I was like, oh right. shoot, changing the channel. That <laughs> was something else. I remember that. That was good times, man. It's like right. uh, you know, you guys grow up watching James Bond and Star Wars movies like that. I mean, it's uh, it's a great time. I mean, I what I would do to like, I've I've always said I'd love to be able to like erase one of the movies from my head. Mm -hmm. And just go rewatch it again for the first time. Because, uh, you know, today it's like we, I'll rewatch the movies and I don't do it as often as I used to because you don't really need to, at least for me. And it's just, um, yeah, it's be fun to be able to go back and watch something brand new, uh, you know, like Dr. No again for the first time. It'd be incredible. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny you say that because I kind of had that same experience. Well, I got the uh, complete 24 movie set on Blu-ray um, and watching the movies, especially the, the older ones, the mm -hmm. first couple ones, in that clarity was like a whole, it was like a brand new movie. It was so right. cool to see everything so clear. And I got to see smaller details, whether it's like, because I'm a car guy, I love classic cars. Yeah. And I was like, well, Dr. Mm -hmm. Notice, pick out all those classic cars. And uh, again, with the fashion, you know counting how many different ties and different uh, pocket squares, you know, they were wearing and the color differences was so cool. Um, but I mean, yeah, that kind of goes into the next question. You know, um, you, you love doing fashion. Obviously you have your whole dressing like bond dedicated to it. And how, what attracted you to just wanting to get into that fashion and that aspect of James Bond? Yeah, you know, I, I think one of the biggest things as I got older is I realized why I like James Bond. Uh, and that was, again, I like the I like the look and the style. You know, not necessarily just James Bond, but just in general, the movies, the way they looked. Um, and then, yeah, I think, you know, I was at a point in my life where I needed to figure out something else to do. Um, and I needed an interest. I needed a hobby. Uh, and I really got into clothing. Um, I had, you know, I think I had said in Joe's thing, I had hair past my shoulders. I was a guitar player and, uh, cut it all off and decided I was going to dress like James Bond every day. Uh, no pun intended there, but, um, you know, I, I just kind of dove in. And then from there, I just, yeah, I really like, you know, I'm not on the levels of Matt Spacer from Bond suits, just suits of James Bond, um, in terms of he can go through all the cloths and all that. I'm more into just the actual like putting outfits together and style and, and, you know, I, I'm interested in it. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. I mean, you know, starting that Instagram account was purely because of uh, peer pressure from Joe Darlington and Dave Zaritsky, uh, mainly from Joe because he remembers it from, it was, it used to be something years ago that very old, but um, yeah, I mean, fashion for me is, you know, the best way to introduce yourself to someone. And I applied a lot to my day job and work in life um and it's you know it's a 
you kind of, you know, putting on a suit, putting on a jacket, whatever. I mean, it just, it's a, uh, there's a makes feeling that goes with it. Yeah. It makes you feel good. At the end of the day, we're all humans. We're all trying to feel good at the end of the day. Um, and then, yeah, it's a, it's something I enjoy doing that most people our age don't do. Um, and you're going to look weird for doing it. Um, and kind of fighting through that little first part of the stage. Cause I remember when I was in college, um, I'd be the guy showing up to class in a, in a sport coat and jeans. Um, where everyone else is still in, you know, pajamas and flip flops. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, there's, if there's a, you'll get, you'll get a little flack for it, but, um, it's, it's fun. And again, it's what, I don't know. I'm, it, you got to, you have to dress, you have to dress well. Um, and yeah. I've learned there's nothing wrong at all being the best dressed person in the room, you know, Not at all. and I think, and it's funny that you say that because I can relate so hard on the fact that. When I go to work, because right now to get through college, I'm a barista at Starbucks. So um, there's sort of a dress code, but you know, all the other college kids there and everyone that's working, they literally try to get around it by wearing either jeans or, you know, they're supposed to be wearing like a non-slip shoes, whatever. But I take the extra mile. I've looked for dress shoes that were non- non-slip. I've, I wear slack sometimes, which is very, I get, you know. I like to go to thrift stores because a lot of the cool clothing that I find and, you know, I'm not too worried about getting messed up. Right. First of course. It could be yeah, found. And then I could get it tailored at the at my local yeah. uh, tailor shop, cool. which is real nice. I'm always about that, having good clothes, especially when it comes to suits and all that tailored because, you know, that's just something that I, I do. And I've learned from the Bond community as well. It makes right. or breaks it, man. Yeah, right. it makes it or break it. You can buy a uh, Tom Ford suit and it'll be too big and it won't look very good. Doesn't matter how much it costs. And, you know, I always show up to work in a tie and like a nice button up shirt. And they're like, Chris, why are you always dressing up, making us look bad? And I'm like, you know, there's a sense of confidence when you walk into a place knowing that you look good and you smell good. Everything's fitting right. just right. The colors match just right. And, and I would I, always say too, like, I mean, when, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at terms of, I've had those same comments that, you know, someone has said to you, I don't know how you've played it off or what you've said, but you know, I always used to just, just ignore it. I, I mean, I, I'm not there to look better than you. I'm not there to look better than anybody. I'm just, I'm just coming to work. It's me. Uh, it's who I am. Yeah. It's what I love to and do. Downplay everything, never draw attention to it, never talk about it. Don't bring it up. Um, you don't need to talk about your clothes. Let the clothes do all the talking for you. Um, and that'll take you everywhere else. And yeah, well, that's a great way, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's what I've always liked to kind of be, like I, like you said, downplay. I, I never say anything. I like to be quiet because people always, they say this stuff for me. Like they always like, what do you, right. why are you doing stuff like that? Why, why do you look like that? I'm like, that's just what I was, what is what I was, how I dress. That's just, me. I, if I was you, I can, at least the way I am today, I'm a little more um, cynical. But I, if someone said that to me, like, why are you dressed like that? I'd, I'm, I'm here. I, I, I came to work. I, right. I, I put on my uniform. I'm here to work. That's uh, my- I, just, I, just, I just dress for work. You know, it's like acting like nothing's even going on. Yeah. It, confidence is the key and not mm-hmm. letting anybody worry about it. And again, I mean, you're, you're dealing with people probably your age or a little bit younger that, again, I mean, it's, it's immaturity and um, – yeah. You know, they hadn't gotten there yet because they don't know anything about it. I mean, you're fortunate to know about clothes or want to learn about clothes. And again, most guys your age in the job world trying to find a job and a career after college, uh, you got to do something to to make yourself stand out because yeah. uh, I assure you it'll be you and hundreds of others trying to get a uh, pilot's license and whatnot. I don't know what all it takes to do all that, but I'm sure there's a lot of face-to-face interviews and Yep. Stuff that you have to do, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, if you walk into that room comfortable in the clothes that you're wearing because you've been wearing those clothes for a long time and you're used to dressing up, um, you're more comfortable, and right. you're not going to be uncomfortable as someone who's never worn a suit before wearing a suit to an interview. Right. You're going to feel uncomfortable. And like I've learned through the years, especially meeting certain people, whether it's through my job or just um, through college and stuff, like there's a difference between. You know, having the confidence of wearing something and then having, you know, the cockiness of wearing something. Because right. a lot of people nowadays, what the big thing is, all these people are wearing like big brands like Polo or, or um, you know, Gucci or all that kind of stuff. And they're like the, mo- the more accessories, the more 
like jumpsuits. What gets me to the jumpsuits that that match with the huge giant Gucci logo from from the shirt to the pants. Right. Like, that's that's what people think is luxury now. That's what people think, and it, 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 it's sad to see it's a dying art of getting dressed up. And I, right. my parents laugh at me, and they're like, "Man, you should have been born in a different era." Because I think it's so cool to see people walking around in a perfectly tailored suit, or at least a nice mm -hmm. tailored fitting suit, mm -hmm. and you know. People, you know, dressing up, and even back when you know women were wearing dresses and all that. I know that's old fashioned, but that there was a sense of right. There's a formality to it that's not right. there anymore, unfortunately. And yeah, and nowadays you see people going around in just jeans or even sweats. You know, people come to school in sweats and pajamas, and it just, I don't know. It's just, it's not me. But you know, I'm I'm glad we're we're talking because you kind of feel me in that way, and. Um, if it was me, if it was, could put it up to me, I would wear a suit every day if I could. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so next question. Um, any advice for those kind of like people that want to dress like Bond but can't really afford like the high-end NPL that's luxury and I mean yeah. um, Oliver Brown, you know, high-end luxury. Any, any, what are your suggestions on, on how yeah, to Yeah, um, you know, Obviously, Dave's done really good videos on the frugal bond. Uh, that'd be my first place I'd start. Okay. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, taking an outfit or taking a piece of clothing, right? We'll call, um, you know, like exactly what you're wearing now with the um, kind of that right. in peel thing from no time to die. I mean, you, you did exactly what what you should do. And that's you take the piece that exactly what it is and find find an alternative. I mean, at the end of the day, right, a navy sweater like that with, some shoulder patches i mean that's right. that's essentially is what he's wearing yeah. so you don't have to go spend the four or five hundred dollars on this sweater you can go get one for 30 bucks or a 100 bucks or whatever you know what i mean so i think the biggest thing is to know you know find what you want what you're looking for is it a suit is it a jacket is it a pair of shoes is it jeans is it boots i mean whatever you're looking for that is you know craig's worn or bond is worn mm -hmm. and just going and you know searching online online is your best tool yeah. um Poshmark, eBay, you can get all of these things. Uh, designer brands a lot on Poshmark. I don't know if you've used Poshmark before, but it is a great, great, easy tool to buy and sell. Very safe. Um, I mean, it's there's ways around it. I think the biggest thing is you just got to, you know, like like Sunspell. Take the, the Navy Polo. It's the best example. Mm -hmm. It's just a Navy Polo. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a Navy Polo. So you wearing a Navy Polo and some stone, you know, light brown colored chinos and some brown suede boots, you have the outfit. Mm. You're going to feel like Bond. You're going to be dressing yeah. like Bond. You're going to, I mean, it, yes, I'll be honest with you. Is it nice to have the exact stuff and have mm. the brands? Yes, because that's a, at, at one point, you're going to then have the ability to, and then you have the appreciation for my H&M polo versus my Sunspell polo. Yeah, there's a difference there. Okay, there's a difference in price and quality and all of that, but they accomplish the same thing. Same thing as a watch. Same thing as a car. They tell the time. They get you from point A to point B. Um, you know, you never want to live outside your means. You never want to do anything stupid um, and save. I mean, save. When I was your age, doing. I mean, that's what I used to do. Is I used to just save and did. I had no life. I didn't go out. I didn't do anything. I just I saved money. Uh, to buy guitars or to buy jackets or anything like that. That's kind of what I did until I started, you know. And the biggest thing is just, I've learned, because, uh, again, I think I'm one of the most different people uh, in the Bond world out there just due to my age. You you got to work. You got to work to be able to afford um, a lot of this stuff. But it's I've always equated it to – it's not you're not just working to buy clothes. Um, you're, you're working because you have that drive. And I think, you know, again, for someone who wants to dress well – something like that there's you already have some innate qualities and characteristics about your personality that are going to make you work I'm, I'm just a big proponent of working today mainly because i feel like our generation um so much competition out there now you know. so much competition but also i think a lot of our our generation is very lazy uh, and they don't want to get up off the sofa and quit playing Fortnite and go right you know, and go work um <laughs> and work on saturdays and sundays and don't complain about it um, so I think if you can have that mindset of I'm going to go work, I'm going to go make something of myself, then you're going to get far ahead of your peers. And then you're going to be in a group of people that are all working together, that are all working hard. You can learn from and you all 
you know, can bounce ideas back and forth off each other. And then Mm -hmm. I think you'll find success in that. And then all of a sudden, you know, hang on, I'm going to buy a $200 shirt today just because, because it's James Bond and I worked for it and I had the money for it. And I've learned, um, my best friend said this out of the blue the other day and it's always stuck with me. He says, if you can't afford it twice, you can't afford it. And that's been sticking with me. Mm -hmm. And I've been using that, you know, to justify certain purchases or not, because it's true. If I can't afford to buy something twice, then, you know, I need to save more. I need to work a little harder so I can get to that point. And I got the end peel, um, on Her Majesty's Secret Service's gloves, which okay. by far is, I wear those things so much. Amazing gloves, right? And I absolutely love them. And, you know, people look at them and they're like, oh my goodness, does that say James Bond? I'm like, yeah, these are the official NPO gloves. And I mean, I did a review on them and everything and I absolutely love them. And it feels, and it's much more than just getting it because I saved for that. And it's a more, I have more appreciation because I know I worked hard and I was able to afford those. Um, and I'm a very big proponent in, again, buying once. Buying once. If you can buy something once and never have to buy another pair of gloves again for a long time, right. again, if you spend $200, I can't remember how much the gloves were, but if they're like 200 bucks, 100 mm-hmm. bucks, whatever they were, it, you're going to get several, several years out of that. Right. Um, it pays for itself over time. But again, it's that upfront cost of if, if paying $200, mm-hmm. or you can't spend $400 right now, don't be buying $200 gloves. And same thing for shirt, boots, whatever. All right. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited because I'm actually going to be going to London for a month in this summer. Very I talked cool. about it a little bit. Um, I'm going to study abroad over there. Um, and I know you just went on a wonderful London trip. Mm-hmm. I might contact you a little bit before yeah. because Please. I yeah. want to be able to do the same thing you did, go to all the locations. I mean, I know I'll be busy because I'll be traveling with a group and they'll be having their right. own schedule. But I believe there's a week, about a week or we have weekends off or something. Every yeah. weekend, if I can, I'm going to be going to a different bond location. I want to go to yeah. a different I, I did it in I did it in two days in London. Everything that you saw, I did in two days. So. I didn't do anything else, but that's all I did. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, there's there's tons of stuff, and you're not gonna see everything. I didn't see everything. I mean, you're gonna there's ton of things that um, your group will probably go to that are James Bond related, also just because it's you know the Big Ben and the London Eye yeah. and the Bridge and all of that. Um, but yeah, no, please feel free. I'm I'm always available, and, and you know, I'm pretty good at it. And uh, I can if not, if I don't know the answer, I'll get you in touch with somebody that that that's does. Because awesome. and that's you know one thing I love about the community because we're always there for each other. And I thank you guys for every everyone just taking that time because I know you guys are busy editing videos, taking pictures, you know, anything, everything that has to do with um, keeping up with Bond and just a um, account in general. And I know. Uh, there's a lot of newcomers, and I know that, you know, I think Joe was talking to uh, Peter Brooker on his latest podcast saying, once the movie's over, a lot of the smaller accounts than ones that just popped up are probably going to, you know, they're going to get bored. Yeah. They're going to yeah. leave. But the cool thing about me is that I see this more than just trying to get followers or whatnot. I, I want to, it's a lifestyle thing, and I, from the start of when I first started watching Kingsman, you know, wanting that luxury British lifestyle has been a goal and kind of a motivate motion motiv- motivation for me to continue to work hard. So one day I'll be able to, even if it's a, my office space, to create that same vibe of just James right. Bond or something. Um, I want to get there, and I just enjoy it because you know. It has, it, it, you know, the smells, you know, certain clone, the way you style your hair, the, the clothes. Again, it's just that lifestyle. And it's funny for me because I have no correlation to any British anything. It's not like it's in my DNA or whatever. Right. But I'm attracted to it because that's where I feel like I'm personally, that's where I fit in. And so, sorry, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent. But- no, you're fine. No, because I agree. I mean, I, I, I travel every week for work. And I mean the smallest of James Bond connections are truly the best. I mean, to be able to, um, you know, check into a hotel, get to your room, unpack. Like I'm a big believer in just unpacking my suitcase when I'm at a hotel. Cause again, I take ownership of it. Um, but you know, I bring my dot kit into the bathroom and take everything out and you take out like, um, you know, a bottle of florist or, or a Tom Ford cologne or something like that. Just to, 
that again, it's that little moment, you know, that Dave Zariski always talks about that little lifestyle moment, but it's more of like, you know, like King James Bond is for you at the end of the day, it's for you. It's for your mind. It's, it's for you. And so for me, I, I treat it as such. So like for me to be able to, you know, have that stuff out, I'm on, I'm on a mission. I'm on a work mission. You know, Uh, that's what we're all trying to do. It's an assignment, you know, Uh, but yeah, that was just going on to say, you know, again, thank you for accepting and taking the time because I know there's so many accounts that look up to you and, and especially now with the new movie coming out, there's so many, there's a huge influx of account popping up here and there, but I want to be able to be, you know, with you guys at certain events. I want to be able to kind of, I know I am younger, but I do have, my father is, um, works for the airline, so I do have the benefit of being able to fly wherever um, and the airfare is covered. So I really wanted to go out and join you guys for Gatherall, which looked like an amazing event. But uh, at that time, I, I was either Gatherall and take a hit from my money that I'm saving from London, or do I just continue saving for London? And I was yeah, just yeah. I got to continue Save saving. for London. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, no matter what, um, there's always going to be another event. Uh, yeah. And there's always going to be something else going on. Uh, and, you know, there's always going to be a jacket. There's always going to be a shirt. There's yeah. always going to be something else to buy. That It never goes away. Um, and, no, at the end of the day, at, at your age, the biggest and most important thing you can do is not blow your money on, you know, just for a hotel in, in you know, Pennsylvania for an event. I mean, yeah, it was fun. There's a lot of people. But, again, there's going to be other stuff. And, you know, it, it goes back to the – you got to be smart because the one dangerous thing with the bond side of things, and I've, I've made the mistakes. I, I, I know it all too well. Um, there's the emotional um, impulse that's there. of like, Oh my gosh, I have to have these sunglasses. Let me buy another pair of sunglasses because mm-hmm. I only have eight others in my, okay. in my room. Right? I need another pair, but bond wears it. So you have to buy it. I mean, there's right. that, that, that kind of mentality. Uh, you just got to kind of be careful. I mean, I, I speak from, like I said, uh, experience. I've even at 27 now with a career and all that, I'm, you know, you got to be very careful and uh, pick and choose wisely. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I think you would be great. You just got to, you know, keep at it. Um, find your, you know, the biggest thing that uh, it's kind of funny with what you're talking about with Joe and what Peter were talking about. Um, I was very reluctant to start an Instagram account mainly because, uh, I was like, Dave, you're doing your thing. Yeah. Matt Space was doing his thing. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. There's not enough. No one. We don't need another James Bond right. clothing Instagram. Um, and I'm talking to myself, too. Like, I don't even we don't need it. Um, there's too many out there um, already. And but, you know, the only thing that I kind of really dove in on was like, you got to find your you know, you got to find the one thing that makes you different than a Matt Spacer or David or Joe or, or Ray from the Bond Armor. You know, you got to find your little your little niche. Uh, it sounds like, uh, you know, aviation is yours potentially. So being able to figure out, you know, maybe turn your Bond Instagram account into something, you know, that's always related to aviation. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for me, it was taking my everyday job, traveling, dressing up, and applying that to James Bond every day because I don't wear James Bond clothes every day. I mean, I have at this point, basically my life has become, it's just what's in my closet, but um, you know, mixing and matching and doing things in the style of James Bond, that's what dressing like Bond is. So that's what, for me, I'm different in that because I'm not just going, here is the outfit from Thunderball. Here's Mm -hmm. the outfit from Spectre. I'm going, here's the outfit from Spectre in a situation in my everyday life, not just, Right. Here's, you know, whatever. So that's all. I mean, that's the only thing I can offer is to try to and find something, you know, that. unique I, and different. Right now, I am in that phase of, you know, I'm starting everything. And I realize I look back at all the pictures and everything. I was post. I don't want to be someone who's like posting every little detail. Like, oh, my gosh. Right. Ron Singer just got the the nod to do the, the score for No Time to Die. I'm going to post about that. I mean, everyone's right. doing it. I want to be able to have like something for my own because that's what's going to stand out, like you said. Right. And I think right now I'm in the phase of trying to figure out what it is. Right. I think that one thing I have going for me is that I am younger. And so I was thinking of thinking maybe doing like once a week or something, finding uh, a way to get the Bond look, but for like the frugal Bond. But I mean, then again, yeah. Dave's doing something like that. or But I mean, the cool thing is, is that, you know, I am younger and I could offer new 
things too. So I, I, it's just a matter of figuring out things. You know, I did my, I did, I'm going to be doing another video. I just got an H&M, um, a um, turtleneck, a uh, charcoal turtleneck. It looks just exactly like the one Perfect. from Spectre. And Perfect. I got it for thirteen ninety five because I got the discount, you know. Perfect. And uh, it fits absolutely perfect. I've done my watches. These are fossil watches, but they look just like the, the you, you can either say it's from Casino Royale or from the Brosnan era. And I also have my black one. I did a post on that one. And I mean, there's certain little things that I love to, I love, love to do and put my hat in the ring. Right. Well, like I said, I mean, if, if you think that's your knack and you're good at it and it's fun for you, then again, lean heavy into that. I mean, Dave does his videos. Yeah, but, you know, that's not what Dave's all about. Mm -hmm. in its entirety you know so don't feel you know that's that's definitely something open i think uh i think quite frankly i think more people doing frugal type bond stuff would be more appreciated than anything else um yeah. because i think you've got everybody else covering the mm -hmm. actual stuff and whatnot because not everybody wants to spend three hundred dollars on a on a sweater right. and if you live in california why do you need to spend three hundred dollars on right. a sweater yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it's the reality of the situation. Oh, yeah. It's like, why bother? Why bother wearing an overcoat in California? Yeah, right. So. But, um, well, let's see. Closing question. There's a couple events coming on, and I'm not sure. I I, I was really thinking about maybe going up to the Skyfall concert. Or, are you thinking about possibly? Yeah, yeah there? in Toronto. Yeah, we've got a, we're doing a little something there. I know uh, the guys at James Bond Complex and uh, myself and Joe Darlington and David Zeritsky and a few others. We're, uh, it's my birthday weekend, so we're kind of like um, Perfect, putting yeah. together a little, little thing. So uh, it's on Facebook. It's Operation Snowfall. If okay. you like, I think if you search for that it should come up it's like the james bond complex is um yeah. kind of their deal and uh, i think um we david and joe and a few other people helped out kind of put it together so yeah awesome so do you should know be. like it would it just be like going to the concert and having dinner after or before or anything um like that? if off the top of my head i think it is the concert at that night i think we're having um kind of like a get together afterwards okay. um and that's pretty much all that i know that it is it's more or less hey we're all going to the concert and if you're going, you know, we're going to hang out afterwards, that kind of thing. It's not the event, obviously, is centered around the concert, which is why everyone's right. go. Right. Yeah. And again, everybody who's listening, if you don't know, uh, Skyphone concert is going to be in Toronto, I think the 20th. February 21st and 22nd. It's a Friday and a Saturday, and, and uh, we're doing the 22nd. Perfect. So yeah. check that out. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. That covers all the questions that I have to ask. Again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk. And yeah, I thanks for that. Happy to do it. I'm so glad we were able to put a face uh, to name and finally connect. Um, I'll definitely be hitting you up for some advice for fashion or when yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm available anytime. Happy to help in any way I can. And again, if you need anything, um, my end, I'm here, part of the community. I mean, I'll do my best to do what I can for you anytime. If you, that's why I remember you said you were coming to San Francisco um, to check things out a couple. Yeah, of yeah, my girlfriend and I went um, middle of December, just before Christmas, kind of for a little weekend. weekend yeah, uh, getaway, so. that's pretty cool. Because I live up, I live in uh, Sacramento, the capital. So I mean, it's not too far. It's like about an hour and a half drive. So. Um, but if you come out this way again, you know, it'd be more than yeah. happy. Yeah, my be one of my best friends lives in LA, so, um, and he's in, actually, he's in San Francisco right now. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I should be in more California since he's moved out there on the last couple months. So yeah, for sure. I'll definitely, uh, let you know. Perfect. Um, but on that note, again, Eris Thomas from hey. Dressing Like Bond, thank you so much for hanging out and being on that one Bond guy meets. And I look forward to hearing from you in the future, my friend. And I hope you have a great, successful week. I have a feeling you will. You're doing great, my friend. Thank I you. I appreciate so. it, Chris. Thanks so much for having me, man. I'll talk to you soon. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much again. Have a good one. Yeah, man. Take care.